And this is the shear. Uh, the shear is an awesome tool. It's going to be cutting metal, really straightforward. Um, it does have some limitations, so I don't want you to ever exceed 0 0.06 thickness of metal. Okay? We have a chart here. Uh, if I'm looking at the chart, I'm going to find the 16 gauge. I'm not going to go above that in mild steel. It's really easy to see what other metals will fall in that by just looking to the right and stay in the same row. Okay? Um, when I am using this tool, there are some safety things that I want you to be paying attention to. Uh, one, there are blades on the back that are sharp and they can cut you and cut things off. So never ever put your fingers through for any reason. This part here will drop down. When I step on this uh, step here, it helps clamp your material, but it's also a pretty serious clamping or it's a pretty serious pinching point. Same with if I'm holding onto my material and I press down on it, that's gonna press here and it's gonna press down on your finger, okay? Then we have our pedal here. Uh, when I press down on that, I am gonna use some force, some speed and follow through. So if my foot is under that, it will not feel good, okay? So when I'm using this tool, I'm going to take, make sure I can see my line appropriately and I'm gonna line it up with one of these guides. That's gonna give me a square cut, which is exactly what I want. If I have a larger piece, I might mark my marks on both sides and then line it up to the bottom blade. So when we actually get in there, it's really important that you see the bottom blade lined up with your line. So I will get this set. I'm gonna slide it back and I'm looking over and down because I wanna see the bottom blade lining up with my line, all right? Once I have it set in place, I'm gonna keep my hand on it against this so it doesn't shift on me. I'm going to put my leg up and then I'm gonna push down. When I push down, I use a decent amount of force and I'm gonna have strong follow through. If I don't, I will not cut all the way through and that's okay. Just don't move your hand because you don't want your piece to walk away. So I'll make a cut and then we'll see how you do. So just making sure everything's clear, my hands are good, my foot is good, and I'll cut. That was a loud snap. That would have really hurt on my foot. I will reach down, I'll grab my part. Sometimes I'll have to walk behind it. That's totally fine. Just keep your fingers clear of the back blades. So we've got our part and we'll head back to the table to mark for the punch. So we've cut our part on our shear and now we're actually gonna set up for the next tool. The next thing that's gonna happen is we need to punch our holes before we make the bend because you can't punch the holes once you've made the bend. So uh, I'm gonna look at my drawing again and what I'm gonna look at instead of the dimensions this time is I'm gonna look at the location of the holes. Uh, when I am looking at the location of the holes, uh, you can see there are multiple measurements. That's because there's multiple uh, holes. And then we have another dimension here. So whenever we have two dimensions like this, we're marking the center hole. So uh, you have to have the two lines. Now you're gonna make a little X, okay? So we're gonna just make the center circle just for ease and I just want you guys to understand how to do this. Uh, so I'm looking at my drawing, it looks like I have one dimension at one inch and I have one dimension at a half an inch. When I'm looking at this drawing, one inch doesn't look like it's the center hole here. So I wanna look at the overall dimension and then add that in. So I have one wall that's two and a half inches in and I add one inch. So my actual dimension is at three and a half inches, okay? I'm gonna unlock my caliper. I'm going to open this up to three and a half. So again, I'm gonna get it on the five and then I'm gonna go right to zero and then I'll lock my lock knob. Same thing again, I'm gonna take my point of my caliper on the outside edge of the material and the other point is gonna make my mark. I don't have to draw a big line here, I just need to have enough that I get my cross hatch, okay? So 
I'm gonna unlock this and I'm gonna go to my second dimension at a half of an inch. So I'll close this up pretty quickly. I'm gonna get close to a half and then I'm gonna dial it in at the zero. And now I'm going to uh, mark my part by just pulling across here. So we have marked our X here. Uh, and now we're actually gonna center punch it. A center punch is a hardened piece of steel that has a point. This point, we're gonna get right on those crosshairs, okay? So we're gonna try and be as accurate as we can. And because we scored it, you can kind of feel it, but you wanna double check visually, okay? You can roll it around to be in place. Uh, once we're set there, you're gonna take your hammer and you're gonna hit it. You're gonna hit it with a okay amount of force. Don't hit it too hard or it'll deform the material, okay? So I'm gonna line myself up. Good there, and I'm gonna give it a whack. And then again, now I have my center punch on the X. Now we're ready for the punch. So head over here. This is the punch. Uh, this is what we're going to be using to punch all of our holes. So we have measured and marked all of our holes and used a center punch. Now we're gonna set up the tool. So go ahead and open up this drawer. We'll get our parts out. This is the die holder. This is our punch holder. We've got this cool spacer. We have our two wrenches and we've got our stripper. Now, what I need to do is find out what size holes I'll be punching for our project. So if I'm looking at my drawing here, I'm going to look at the hole that I'm punching. So this is the one in the center that we decided. I'm gonna look at the feature and it says I'm punching a 3 8 through hole. So I'm going to look at my drawers and I'm gonna open the appropriate drawer. So I'll open this one and I'm going to open this chart here. When I look at this, this isn't always the most, it's not always the easiest to understand. Just always mimic it if, if this was laying flat down. So I'm looking for three eighths. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. So I will take my punch and die out of there and we'll actually set everything up now. So I'm gonna take my die holder and I'm gonna take my die. Here you can see there is a small groove. I'm gonna line that up with the set screw here. So I'll just line that up. Uh, it's important that we don't do this upside down. There's a good diagram that we'd wanna look at. So I will line that up and then I'm gonna use the small wrench to get it snug. We don't want to go super tight. Then I'm going to take my punch and my punch holder. So it's important to note on the punch here, there is this point that's going to help us line up with our center punch. So I'm going to line up again this groove to our, our uh, set screw. I'm going to tighten this up. And then this one I want you to put a decent amount of force on. We want to make sure it stays in and it doesn't like slide out, okay? So I have my tool and die in their appropriate holders. It's time to set up the tool. So I'm going to take this little uh, lock out. I'm going to take my punch first, slide this up, okay? I want to make sure it's going all the way up, which it is. I'm going to line up the set screw with this set screw. You always want to support your tools when you're putting them in. So I'll tighten this by hand. I'm not letting go. I'm gonna grab the big wrench and I'm going to tighten it nice and snug. Now I can let go. I'm gonna take my die. I'm gonna slide this in. This is where that cool spacer comes in. Slide that in. This is gonna lock everything in place. So I'll slide that on. And I'm only gonna tighten the center one here, okay? So, Get a little bit of like strength on there, but it doesn't have to be crazy. 
Do not mess with these outside ones. You can misalign things and it's no good. We do want to make sure that when we punch, the punch and die will not collide. So I'm going to slowly bring this down. If it does, don't force it past the edge. Uh, get staff and we'll deal with it. Okay. So now I've got my part. You can see a center divot from when we did the center punch. I'm going to line it up with that point. When I do, uh, the first time you use this tool, I want you to put a little bit of cutting fluid on there. Um, every two to three punches after that's appropriate. Then I'm going to slide this around and I'll kind of feel it. Uh, once it fits inside that little divot that we made, it's like locked in place. <laughs> well, usually. There it goes. So now we have it in place. So it's locked in place. I can feel that it's there. I've dropped this side down so I keep tension on it so it stays in that point. I'm going to lower this slowly and I'm going to move my finger as it comes down so I don't pinch myself, but I haven't lost the accuracy of my placement, okay? Here, I'm gonna put a decent amount of force uh, because you're punching through metal. Uh, don't punch yourself in the face or the shoulder or like fall down. Uh, so you're gonna pull down and before you come up, we have to put the stripper on. Stripper is this guy right here. Uh, it's going to hang on these two points. I'm going to slide it underneath the set screw here and then hang it. When I do that, I lift up and the stripper stops the material from coming up and pulls your material off. Okay? If you don't do that, you will sit there and try and wiggle it and you can break the punch. All right? Once we're done with that, I would take this off. I would line up my next punch, punch it, put the stripper back on. It is very hard to line up accurately with the stripper on the tool. Once you're finished, we take the tool apart. It is the opposite that we did to put it on. The only thing is I'm going to open this, slide out the spacer. You can reach underneath here and slowly move it and then pull it out. A lot of people will just try and do it like this and they end up throwing it on the floor. So don't do that. Once you're clear, support your tool, unlock it and then slowly bring it down and then put everything away. So we've made our punch with the punch. I'm gonna put these away real quick. So center punch goes in here, hammer goes in here. And now it's actually time to deburr. When we deburr something, we're gonna take the hard edge off. So if I look at my piece of metal here, um, I'm not sure if you guys will see, but uh, there's one side that is white and there's one side that is shiny. The white part is where the, actual, the metal actually tore. So that's fairly sharp. We wanna make sure now we take that sharp edge off so nobody gets hurt like when you turn it in and my staff has to like touch it. So one of the expectations is this to be soft. So you are gonna be making sure that you deburr well. So we're gonna use two things to deburr. One is a file and one is this uh, deburring tool this is for doing holes specifically. So we'll start with the file. Uh, when I'm gonna be deburring with the file, uh, I'm going to be pushing, okay? I'm only going to be pushing because the file is set up to cut in one direction. If you pull, it's not really going to be effective and you can actually start rolling the teeth over on the file. So only one direction, okay? You want to do longer strokes. You don't want to do these short little strokes because you can create little edges in there. So longer strokes, um, work both sides of it. 
get it nice and like, uh, you know, filed down. You can see here, there's like this little sliver of metal that's happening. That's because that edge is breaking. Do your corners. So do your corners to a point and then round them over. Okay. Um, this doesn't take excessive force. Those teeth can only cut so much. All right. Uh, you're going to damage your file. One thing that I want you guys always to do is use a file with the handle on it. Do not use a file without a handle. Uh, it is less easy to control. It, it can hurt you. Uh, so please, please do that. So last thing I want you guys to, when you're done filing, you need to wash your hands. So you're going to have this fine metal dust. Do not put it in your eyes and do not put it in your mouth. So wash your hands before you eat. Okay. Then I have my deburring tool. This is one type of deburring tools. Wilson Center has three of them. One is a swivel. One is a like three sided knife. And this is a round deburring tool. If I look at my round deburring tool here, I can see that I have a cutting face here. And this one, as I rotate, it can only cut one direction. So if I'm looking at my hole here, I can see there's this raised metal. That is from when we punched through with the tool. Uh, I want to cut that off. So I'm going to push it in. I'm going to put a little bit of force here and I'm going to rotate. And as I rotate, I'm actually cutting the metal. So see these little chips that came out? Uh, you're actually cutting a chamfer into the metal. Uh, sometimes you want to do both sides. You do want to be careful not to make the hole bigger than you intend it because you're cutting, okay? Um, Again, we're gonna check all the holes. We're gonna chalk all the edges. So make sure you do it appropriately. If I do it after I bend it, it's really hard to do the whole thing. Okay. So now we're actually ready to mark and go to the break. Looking at my drawing, again, I'm gonna find the dimension that I'm gonna bend at, so that's two and a half inches, so I unlock the lock knob. Um, I'm going to open this up to two and a half. I'm going to take, again, my point on the outside edge, drag across. I'm gonna have you do both sides because you're gonna do it in the drawing. Um, this is going to be something to like pay attention to on the, the break and then I'll do the other side. So I just had to flip it around. All right. So, uh, with that, we're actually ready to head to the break. This is the break. Uh, the break is going to be making our bends for us. Uh, how it's going to work is we have this handle here. When I lift the handle up, it raises these jaws. The jaws are gonna come down and it is going to clamp our material. And then when we're ready to bend it, we'll move this, okay? And this will lift up that leg. Um, there are some safety considerations here. Uh, one, this is obviously a huge pinch point. Please do not put your fingers in there. Another one is once I have my material in, if I am between the material, and the, the bed, when it comes down, it locks in place and can pinch me as well, okay? Um, always have this in the down position or locked in the back position, never between. Uh, when I am going to like set this up, I am going to line up my scribed line here with the jaw itself. So I'll slide this in Bring this down a little bit, make sure I'm good. Make sure I'm square to the jaw. This one doesn't have a guide like the other one. Once I'm in a good space, bring it all the way down. Um, we have this set for the angle for the, the basic two project. And if you're gonna use it, you can adjust the radius of the bend, but you have to ask staff for assistance. When we are ready to make our bend, we're going to take the handle here, and we're going to push it away from us, which will uh, lift that leg. When I do this, um, keeping an eye on my metal, 
And I want to take into account the elasticity of the metal. So when I come back, you'll watch it actually spring back a little bit. So if you want to go to 90 degrees, you have to go a little past 90 because it will come back. Um, in this project, uh, there is a little trick to having your second bend because it is going to come and it's going to hit this jaw. You want to over bend the first bend just a little bit. Okay. Um, not a lot because once we've bent this metal, uh, it is become work hardened and it is really hard to bend back and you'll actually see the metal around it deform before that will. So I'll unlock this, look at my bend. It's pretty good. Uh, it's a little over, but I meant to do that. So we will make our second bend lining up here and dropping it down. I'm uh, making my bend, keeping an eye on the metal. <coughs> I'm going to hit here and I'm deflecting up slightly uh, with the anticipation of bending it back. And hopefully I have a square bend. Um, I'm actually out just a little bit, which isn't too crazy because it's just aluminum. You can bend it in. We're also screwing it in. Uh, if you have questions, uh, staff is happy to answer them and we are as well. All right, let's head back.